Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another game of Chessable Masters 2020 Grand Final. So we have Magnus Carlsen and Anish Giri. I show you one game where Anish Giri uh, managed to win against Magnus Carlsen uh, and then we had two blitzes. So first blitz was drawn uh, and this is the second one, decisive, uh, and both of the players would love to win. However, there was some drama in the game, so we Without further ado, let's see what happened on the board, and uh, and this is pretty interesting. So uh, we have d4 by Magnus Carlsen, knight on f3, c4, e6, knight on c3, and bishop on b4. So we have Nimzo Indian defense, and nowadays e3 is the most popular move. Queen on c2, of course, is possible. Knight on f3, usually transposing to some kind of uh, of queen's gambit declined, uh, or even f3. So this are the well-known variations. However, in the old days, a3, Samish variation, was quite popular uh, and Magnus Carlsen plays that uh, from time to time. He played that against Ding Liren, uh, against Levon Aronian, Sergei Karyakin, so it's nothing new for Magnus Carlsen. Uh, we have Bishop on c4 and here, believe me or not, Magnus Carlsen disconnected. One and a half minute. Uh, and Anish Giri was so confused that he didn't know what to do. And he started to think, maybe I should uh, give up the queen or, or maybe not. It doesn't make sense. So maybe something with the time. And he was so confused, he didn't know what to do. Uh, and you know, it had more impact on him than on Magnus Carlsen because... Uh, Anish wanted to do something good out of that, uh, not just, you know, win because he has one and a half minute more uh, on time. So Magnus Carlsen came black and then he started to blitz all the moves. So we have B takes on C3 uh, and now, of course, C5. This is the main line. Taking this would create this um, triple pawns, which, of course, are very easy to attack. And so we have e3, the main line, knight on c6, bishop on d3, d6, knight on e2, uh, and now e5. And here, uh, the main idea around that is just to castle, uh, and after castle, uh, play e4 with the idea of, of locking the d5. So, uh, h6 can be very important move, uh, the idea is, of course, to take away this important square from this bishop, as this bishop doesn't really have the great squares, uh, you know, on the board, uh, and it's very difficult to develop that. So, so d5 is the is the main idea here. Now the knight can jump to to a5 and put the constant pressure on c4, and then b6 is coming. The bishop gonna also uh, put the pressure here, uh, and black has a really great position to play. However, Magnus goes for knight on g3. Uh, quite the sideline uh, and now what to play uh, that's the question for Anish Giri because he got confused and he immediately play h5 which in the interview he said he quite regret because first of all he gives up this square g5 for the for the bishop for now the bishop is locked but Magnus Carlsen of course gonna exploit that uh, and we have one game in the database where d5 is played and after uh, knight on a5 h3 is played okay so uh, this is quite normal approach uh, black stands pretty good with the natural plan of attacking c4 pawn however Magnus goes for h4 uh, blocking this pawn uh, and now we have queen on e7 moving the queen uh, in front on the, of the king so now d4 pawn is in the danger as this pawn of course is pinned so we have d5 immediately and now what to do with this knight the knight cannot go to very natural a5 because that's the you know, losing the game, losing the knight and the game. So that's not possible. But interesting option would be e4, making a space uh, for the knight here. And, and now, of course, exchanging 
this way wouldn't be the great idea for white as these pawns would be completely isolated so bishop on b1 knight on e5 and uh, white can win this pawn but of course gonna lose this pawn so just exchanging the pawns and the game can continue uh, pretty equal position however we have knight on b8 so uh, anish giri is you know has a quite lack of development uh, we have e4 so now locking the center now any e4 moves are not possible anymore uh, and bishop on g4 uh, provoking f3 which magnus of course played uh, and bishops go back to c8 we have bishop on g5 and this is what i was talking about after playing um, h5 this move is possible and this pin can be really annoying you cannot for example play knight b on d7 because this knight gonna jump to f5 and position um, of white gonna be just great just great to play the queen can come also to to a5 there are a lot of weaknesses uh and black have to be very precise to just uh it's actually very difficult to defend that position so instead we have queen on c7 uh messing up the pawn structure however opening the g file so that's the uh some idea for anish giri bishop on f6 g takes on f6 and now castle by magnus carlsen he could stay probably in the center but he thought okay the king gonna be more safe uh, on the king side uh, we have knight on d7 anish uh, start to uh, develop and now immediately f4 uh, and try to attack on the uh, on the open file we have e takes on f4 and now rook takes on f4 is possible but magnus goes for a knight on h5 attacking f6 uh, and this pawn actually can be defended however that position would be would be just bad so for example king on e7 rook on f4 then bring the queen to f3 bring the rook uh, and just you know with this aliyahin gun just you know attack the position of black and black would be totally cramped here and that, that would be very difficult to defend as well so anish um, want to unleash his his pieces knight on e5 uh, knight on f6 uh, and now king on d8 we also have rook on f4 so white uh, has two extra pawns however um, the plan of anish is knight on uh, g6 and now win this pawn uh, and also threatening to take the exchange and here magnus carlsen uh, plays the best move in the position and he doesn't care about the exchange because he thinks okay these two pawns gonna win the game for me i have the good position and this is closed position so you know my minor piece is gonna be uh my knight gonna be as strong as your rook definitely so uh we have queen on f3 uh, and here if anish would like to take the the pawn it's not really possible because after rook on h4 rook on h4 queen g3 attacking the the rook and also threatening some mating ideas so uh, rook on h8 queen on g7 still harassing rook on e8 uh and now this is just disaster uh white's gonna win that easily so it was not possible to take the pawn on h4 but it was possible to take the rook so for example a knight on f4 queen on f4 queen e7 a rook on f1 and the game can continue uh, however anish de decided to play queen on e7 first setting up a little trap because if the rook comes to f1 then actually this pawn can be taken uh, but magnus is not interested in that and first he pushed the pawn so we have h5 uh, kicking the knight and now um, anish has to decide he gonna play knight on e5 and for example after queen on e3 uh bishop d7 uh, and then continue the game this way uh, or maybe this is completely passive game it's uh, not easy to play but but it's but it's still um, very okay uh, or just win the exchange uh, and this is what anish did so we have knight on f4 queen on f4 and now queen on e5 uh trying to exchange the queens magnus accept as queen on e5 d on e5 creates the passed pawn so magnus has protected passed pawn on his own 
And now g4, as g4 is protected by the knight, so the pawn cannot be taken. We have a5 with the idea of bringing the rook to the game, g5 uh, and now rook on a6 with the idea of giving back the exchange and winning the pawn on h5. Very simple idea and Magnus could simply uh, play bishop on e2 and defend that pawn okay so this uh, sacrifice uh, wouldn't work as well however he played rook on b1 and here anish had the chance to equalize so we have um, rook on f6 g takes on f6 and rook on h5 and now rook on b5 attacking both of the pawns so of course they are cannot be protected so uh, anish should find some counterplay and the best what he could do is go after f6 pawn this pawn is really annoying so uh, rook on h6 uh, and for example rook c5 rook on g6 with check and now if the king move to f2 then of course winning the pawn with tempo and if king on h2 still rook on f6 uh, with the idea of bringing the rook to f3 winning more material so probably king on g3 but then consolidating um, playing b6 and white has one extra pawn however it's double pawn so probably that would be the close to the draw so uh, this was possible however uh, Anish went for rook on h3 uh, going for this material first and here magnus plays uh the best move in the position bishop on e2 not bishop on f1 attacking harassing the rook that would not make any sense as the rook gonna uh, go to c3 anyway but this bishop belongs to h5 to attack f7 so that is the idea we have rook on c3 uh, rook on a5 and now uh, again rook g3 and going after this pawn this is the best idea here in this position uh, and after let's say king on f2 rook on g6 uh, and and then winning this pawn is very very important uh, and the game can continue it's more difficult now for black however according to the engine that was the best idea to to continue here uh, Anish Giri doesn't agree and first uh, he gonna attack the, the bishop and the, and the pawn and of course bishop on h5 as planned. We have rook on e4 so Anish creates his own passed pawn as he figure out that this is the, the best idea to win. However, in this position, Magnus Carlsen has a really great uh, continuation. So feel free to pause the video and find the winning continuation. Uh, these are two good moves uh, for Magnus Carlsen uh, to win this position while I enjoy my cup of tea. So the best move and the only winning move in the position is actually Rook on A8. Rook on a8 pinning the bishop and now the point is you cannot you know just run around um, win another pieces because after bishop on f7 this bishop gonna come to e6 uh, so for example rook on f4 bishop on e6 rook on f6 rook c8 winning this uh, bishop uh, and of course the game so uh, that is the idea here very very simple so king on c7 unpinning and now d6 so this is another move which we have to find uh, and of course the pawn cannot be taken because the bishop is hanging so king on d7 and now king blocks the bishop this is the idea so we have bishop on f7 by magnus carlsen and now rook on g4 with check king on h2 and finally rook f4 going after that pawn we have king on g3 now and rook on f6 bishop on h5 and the idea of course is bringing the bishop to g4 and winning the piece and black cannot do much about that we have rook on f4 bishop on g4 as planned and now Black cannot, you know, give up the exchange because this is simply losing. Rook on g4, king on g4, uh, and even you play something like b6. What white can do is simply give up the exchange and win the game. Very simple way. This, of course, is winning position for white. So Anish Giri is not interested and he wants to make as much complications as possible. And some counterplay and he plays king on d6. We have bishop on c8, so he is now down the 
down this piece uh, and now rook on c4 so he creates two pass pawns on his own so this is his chance he wants to exchange one of this pass pawn advance it exchange it for the bishop and draw that game so here is the plan bishop on b7 uh, and now rook on c3 keeping an eye on this pawn so if the rook ever uh, you know moves and um, then the pawn gonna be lost we have king on g4 and this actually gives a niche uh, chances to draw king on f2 going in the front of the pawns is obvious choice however we have king on g4 uh, and now c4 by anish giri bishop on e4 blocking this pawn and here what Anish should do is bring the king to the center, help the pawns uh, to promote and, you know, uh, exchange for the bishop and draw that game. So this was his chance. Uh, so, for example, king on c5, king on f5, king on d4. Uh, uh, and, and let's say rook on b3 still keeping an eye on this pawn so if the rook moves, uh, then of course uh, that would be the, the great idea. So this was possible however we have rook on c1 by anish giri which is sadly losing move uh, the idea is to um, help to advance this pawn so uh, we have rook on a5 cutting the king so the king cannot come uh, and help the pawns anymore this is the idea we have rook on f1 counter cutting the the white king uh, and now king on g3 and now rook on f4 uh, attacking the bishop so bishop on f3 creating the shield for the for the king so the king could enter the game however in this position that would not be possible because e4 who, um, and the and the bishop is pinned and uh, white actually would lose the bishop so um but anish giri didn't wait and plays rook on d4 uh, and magnus just enters to the game with the king so we have king on f2 and here uh, believe me or not, but Anish had another drawing chance. So all he had to do is play c3 uh, and threatens, you know, c2. And it's very difficult to stop that pawn, actually. So probably we would have some rook on a6, very sneaky move. The king still cannot come here because of the uh, rook on c6. So this pawn would be lost and the game would be lost. Uh, but king on d7 and what now? If you think, okay, rook on c6, I'm gonna catch that pawn. That's the greatest idea ever. Actually, e4. And you are in the huge, huge troubles, okay? Your rook is under attack, your bishop is under attack. Uh, you have to take here and of course that would be a draw, okay? King on f3 and that's a draw. Uh, from the other hand, the rook is coming to c4 anyway and this pawn gonna advance. So maybe bishop on e2. Uh, but then king on c7 and what is next what is, what is the plan here you cannot go for king e3 king e2 because this is losing c2 and this pawn gonna advance and you can do nothing about that and black would win that game that would be amazing black would win that game so what white would have to do in this position is rook on a7 uh, and after king on b6 rook on a6 king on b7 rook would have to come this way Okay, but the game is still very, very complicated and very close to draw. So all of this was possible, uh, but Anish would have to play uh, quite precise. C3 was the way to go in this position. Uh, however, he played Rook on D3 and this is uh, a losing game in the position. We have bishop on e4, uh, harassing the rook, so rook on b3, uh, king on e2, rook on b2, king on e3, rook b3, king d2, so uh, king is approaching, so now we have king on c7, uh, and now simply a4, so advancing the pawn, uh, we have king on b6, rook on e5, uh, and now rook on b4, and after bishop on c2, Anish Giri had to resign as he cannot take this pawn uh, and white just gonna come with the king to c3, win the pawn, uh, maybe even exchange the rooks uh, and this bishop with the pawn gonna win the game. 
as the bishop uh, has the same color uh, as the promoting square in the corner so very important uh, if you have the bishop you know opposite color that would be a draw however in this position uh, Anish Giri has nothing to do and he resigned in this position so uh, I would like to show you what just happened as you see Magnus Carlsen won his first mini match and today we're gonna have another mini match so Anish Giri uh, if he wants to still fight he has to win the second mini match and then uh, decide in the third one uh, who gonna be the winner of the tournament anyway great performance by Anish Giri so congratulations and of course if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss any other games press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one